mantra for purifying speech. Jong Guop Jenon, Suri Suri Maha Suri Su Suri Sabaha Suri Suri Maha Suri Su Suri Sabaha Suri Suri Maha Suri Su Suri Sabaha. The Sutra opening verse The Supreme Dharma, profound and wondrous, is rarely encountered, even in myriad kalpas. Being able to hear and uphold it now, I yearn to understand the Tathagata's true meaning. The Sutra of the Medicine Master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata. Thus have I heard, once Buddha Shakyamuni, the world honored one, was traveling widely throughout many different regions to teach and transform the people. When he arrived in Vaisali, he rested under the tree of musical sounds. The world honored one was accompanied by a great assembly that included 8,000 great bhikkhus, 36,000 bodhisattvas, as well as kings, great ministers, brahmins, laymen, and laywomen, gods, dragon, dragons, and the other types of heavenly beings, and other human and non-human beings who all gathered respectfully around the Buddha as he preached the Dharma. At that time, Mutsu Bosal, Prince of the Dharma, received the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, rose from his seat, adjusted his robe to bare his shoulder, and knelt on his right knee. He bowed deeply with palms joined respectfully and respectfully addressed the Buddha. World Honored One, may I please request you to explain the various names and titles, the great original vows and the superlative virtues of the Buddhas, so that those who are listening to you will be freed of karmic obstacles, while in the future, sentient beings in the Dharma semblance age will also derive great benefit and joy. The Buddha praised Munsu Bosal, saying, Excellent, excellent Munsu, out of great compassion, you have urged me to explain the names and titles, merits and virtues, and original vows of the Buddhas in order to li liberate those who are bound by karmic obstacles and to bring benefits, peace, and joy to all sentient beings in the Dharma semblance age. Now listen attentively and reflect very carefully upon what I am about to say. Muntu Bosal replied, So be it, world honored one. We will joyfully listen to whatever you wish to teach. The Buddha then said to Muntu Bosal, <clears throat> East of this world, past countless Buddha lands, more numerous than the grains of sand in ten Ganges rivers. There exists a world called pure lapis lazuli. The Buddha of that world is called the medicine master lapis lazuli radiance Tathagata. Arhat, perfectly enlightened one, perfect in mind and deed, well gone, knower of the world, unsurpassed being, tamer of passions, teacher of gods and humans, Buddha and Bhagavan. Munsu, when the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata first set out on the Bodhisattva path, he solemnly made the twelve great vows to enable sentient beings to accomplish all of their aspirations. First great vow, I wish that in a, I vow that in a future life, when I have attained Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, brilliant rays will shine forth from my body, illuminating infinite countless boundless realms. This body will be adorned with 32 marks of greatness and 80 auspicious characteristics. Furthermore, I will enable all sentient beings to become just like me. Second great vow. I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, my body inside and out will radiate far and wide the clarity and flawless purity of lapis lazuli. This body will be adorned with superlative virtues and dwell peacefully in the midst of a web of light more magnificent than the sun or moon. This light will awaken the minds of all beings dwelling in darkness, enabling them to engage in their pursuits according to their wishes. Third great vow. I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, I will, with infinite wisdom and skillful means, provide all sentient beings with an inexhaustible quantity of goods to meet their material needs. They will never experience deprivation of any kind. Fourth great vow. I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, 
I will set all who follow unwholesome paths upon the path to enlightenment. Likewise, I will set those who follow the Shravaka and Pracheka Buddha paths onto the Mahayana path. Fifth Great Vow. I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, I will help all the countless sentient beings who cultivate the path of discipline in accordance with my Dharma to observe the rules of conduct to perfection in conformity with the three root precepts. Even those guilty of disparaging or violating the precepts will regain their purity upon hearing my name and avoid descending to the lower realms. Sixth Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, sentient beings whose bodies are imperfect or deficient in any way, or who are suffering from various illnesses, will, upon hearing my name, acquire well-formed bodies, endowed with intelligence, with all senses intact. They will be free of illness and suffering. Seventh Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, sentient beings afflicted with various illnesses, with no one to help them, nowhere to turn, no physicians, no medicine, no family, no home, who are destitute and miserable, will, as soon as my name passes through their ears, be relieved of all their illnesses. With body and mind peaceful and contented, they will enjoy home, family, and property in abundance, and eventually realize unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. Eighth Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, for the sake of all simple and limited sentient beings, I will pro proclaim the correct Dharma, causing them to all gain passage to the other shore, Nirvana, and to escape from the cycle of birth, old age, sickness, and death. They will enter the Dharma gate of wisdom, and I will cause all things to be clear to them, so that they will no longer have doubts. In future lives, they will be endowed with noble features and eventually attain Anuttara Samyaksam Bodhi and become just like me. Ninth Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, I will help all sentient beings escape from the demon's net and free themselves from the bonds of wrong views. Should they be caught in the thicket of wrong, wrong views, I will lead them to correct views gradually inducing them to cultivate the practices of bodhisattvas and swiftly realize unsurpassed correct enlightenment. Tenth Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, those sentient beings who are shackled, beaten, imprisoned, condemned to death, or otherwise subjected to countless miseries and humiliations by royal decree, and who are suffering in body and mind from this oppression, need only hear my name to be freed from all these afflictions, thanks to the strength, strength of my merits, virtues, and great spiritual powers. Eleventh Great Vow I vow that in a future life, when I have become a Buddha, if sentient beings who are tormented by hunger and thirst, to the point of creating evil karma in their attempts to survive, should succeed in hearing my name, recite it single-mindedly, and hold fast to it, I will first completely satisfy their hunger and thirst, with the most exquisite food and drink. Then they can enjoy the wondrous flavor of the Dharma, and I will firmly establish them in a state of peace and happiness. Twelfth Great Vow I vow that in a future life, <clears throat> when I have become a Buddha, if there are sentient beings who are suffering day and night because they are utterly destitute, lacking even clothes to protect them from heat and cold, as well as from mosquitoes and biting flies, if they should hear my name, recite it single-mindedly, and hold fast to it, their wishes will be fulfilled. They will immediately receive all manner of exquisite clothing, precious adornments, flower garlands, and incense powder, and will enjoy music and entertainment to their heart's content. Munsu, these are the subtle, mysterious, and supreme vows made by the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, Arhat, perfectly enlightened one, while he was following the Bodhisattva path. Mutsu, if I spoke for a kalpa, or even longer than a kalpa, I would not be able to describe the wonder of this Buddha's twelve great vows, nor could I fully describe the wonders of the pristine Buddha land that he attained. Mutsu, 
The medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance to Tagata's Buddha Land is utterly pure. You will find no temptations, no realms of unfortunate rebirth, nor even cries of suffering there. In this Buddha Land, the ground is made of Lapis Lazuli. The boundaries are demarcated with golden cords. The towns, towers, palaces, pavilions, as well as the balconies, windows, and draperies are all made of the seven treasures. The merits, virtues, and adornments of this realm are identical to those of Amitabha Buddha's Western Pure Land. In this Pure Land, in this Buddha Land, dwell two great Bodhisattvas, Ilguang Byonjo Bosal and Wolguang Byonjo Bosal. Among the countless Bodhisattvas, they are the leaders. Each in turn will serve as successor to the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata and as the able guardian of his true Dharma treasury. For these reasons, Munsu, all devout men and women should vow to be reborn in this Buddha land. Buddha Shakyamuni then told Munsu Bosal, there are sentient beings who cannot tell right from wrong. They are greedy and mean, do not practice charity, and do not understand the rewards of generosity. They are ignorant and unintelligent, lacking the foundations of faith. They amass riches, which they assiduously hoard. Whenever they come across anyone seeking charity, they become annoyed. If forced to give, they feel as much pain and regret as if they were parting with their own flesh. Moreover, there are also countless sentient beings who are miserly and avaricious. They spend time amassing wealth while not daring to spend it even on themselves, let alone on parents, parents, spouse, children, servants, or beggars. When they die, these greedy persons will descend to the realms of hungry ghosts or animals. However, even though they may suffer such a fate, if in a previous existence in the human realm, they happen to hear the name of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, and now are able to recall and recite his name, even briefly, they will immediately vanish from the lower realms to be, to be reborn, to be born once more among humans. However, they will now remember their stay in the lower realms and, dreading their past suffering, they will cease to wallow in worldly pleasures. They will gladly practice charity themselves and praise others who do so. Eventually, they will even be able to donate their head, eyes, limbs, blood, flesh, or other parts of their bodies to those who need them, not to mention mere material possessions. Moreover, Monsu, there are sentient beings who have accepted the teachings of the Tathagata, but have violated the precepts, or they have not violated the precepts, but have broken the regulations. Or else, while they have violated neither the precepts nor the regulations, they have disparaged right views. Or they have not disparaged right views, but have abandoned extensive study of the Dharma, and thus cannot explain the profound meaning of the sutras preached by the Buddha. Or else, although they may be learned, they have grown conceited. Because conceit clouds the mind, they believe that they are in the right and others are in the wrong. Therefore, they deprecate the correct dharma and ally themselves with demons. Such deluded persons are not only following wrong views themselves, they also lead countless other sentient beings into the same great pitfall. These sentient beings are bound to wander endlessly in the realms of hell beings, animals, and hungry ghosts. Yet, if they should succeed in hearing the name of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, they will abandon their evil conduct and begin to cultivate wholesome ways and thus avoid descending to the lower realms. Even those who cannot abandon evil practices or cultivate wholesome teachings and thus descend to the lower realms can still benefit from the awesome power of the Tathagata's original vows. If through this power they should hear his name even briefly, their time in the lower realms will end and they will be born again in the human realm. They will hold correct views, diligently pursue their practice and tame their minds. They will then be able to abandon the home life and become monks or nuns. 
they will uphold and study the Dharma of the Tathagatas rather than disparaging and violating it. With correct views and extensive study, they will fathom the extremely profound meaning of the teachings, abandon all conceit, and cease to disparage the correct Dharma. They will no longer have demons as companions and will gradually cultivate the practices of bodhisattvas and swiftly per perfect them. Moreover, Munsu, there are sentient beings who are avaricious, envious, jealous, and accustomed to praising themselves and disparaging others. They are bound to sink down to the three lower realms, suffering intense misery for countless thousands of years. When this intense suffering comes to an end, they will be born in the Saha world as oxen, horses, donkeys, or camels, often beaten and mistreated. They will suffer hunger and thirst and constantly travel along the road carrying heavy loads. If they succeed in coming back as human, they will be among the poor and, low, and lowly, always serving others, constantly receiving orders, never being free. However, if any of them in a former incarnation as a human being have heard the name of the world honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, and as a result of this good cause, now remember and with a completely sincere mind, take refuge in him. They will, thanks to this Buddha's spiritual powers, escape all suffering. Their senses will be sharp, and they will be wise and learned, constantly seeking the supreme teachings and meeting with good spiritual friends. They will break forever through Mara's net, smash the shell of delusion, dry up the river of afflictions, and thus escape all the worry and suffering of birth, old age, disease, and death. Moreover, Monsu, there are sentient beings who love to quarrel, create schisms, and engage in legal disputes. They constantly make themselves and others suffer, creating and increasing all kinds of evil karma with body, speech, and mind. They plot against one another without mercy, while invoking the spirits of mountains, forests, trees, and tombs. They kill sentient beings and use their flesh and blood to propitiate the Yaksha and Rachal demons. They may also write down the names and make images of those against whom they harbor grudges, curse them with evil mantras, or try to harm or kill them with potions, sorcery, or demons raised from the dead. However, if these sentient beings succeed in hearing the name of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, none of their evil, evil practices will any longer be able to cause harm. Moreover, the mind of compassion will gradually arise in them and also in their intended victims, and they will all come to experience great peace and joy. All those involved will abandon harmful, harmful thoughts, leaving behind their angry, spiteful minds, and they will be happy and satisfied with what they have with what they have they will no longer seek to encroach upon others but will instead seek to benefit one another moreover monsu within the fourfold assembly of monks nuns laymen and laywomen as well as among other men and women of pure faith there are those who are able to adhere to the eight precepts for a full year or for three months a year dedicating these good roots toward rebirth in Amitabha's Western Pure Land of ultimate bliss, where they can devote themselves completely to the study and practice of the correct Dharma. If their birth in the Pure Land is still uncertain, but they hear the name of the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, then at the time of death, eight great bodhisattvas will come to their aid, namely, Munsu Bosal, Kwansayam Bosal, Deseji Bosal, Mu Jinwi Bosal, Bodanwa Bosal, Yaguan Bosal, Yaksang Bosal, and Miruk Bosal. Those great bodhisattvas will travel through space and descend to show them the way to the Pure Land, where they will be reborn spontaneously within jeweled flowers of many hues. Or else they might be born in the celestial realms. Despite their birth in the celestial realms, their good roots are still not exhausted, and thus they will not be born in the lower realms, 
when their lifespan in the celestial realms comes to an end, they may return to the human world as wheel-turning kings, ruling over the four continents around Mount Sumeru with awesome virtues and ease. They will set countless hundreds of thousands of sentient beings onto the path of the ten virtues, or else such persons may be born as Kshatriyas or Brahmins or as members of great and prosperous families with abundant wealth and overflowing granaries and storehouses. They will be endowed with noble features, numerous family members and retainers, as well as intelligence, wisdom, bravery, vigor, and the imposing demeanor of a great hero. Likewise, there are those who harbor doubts because their roots of faith are deficient. And if they were able to hear the name of the world honored medicine master Tathagata, then as a result of this good cause, they will hear the correct Dharma, causing them to gain passage to the other shore, Nirvana, and to escape from the cycle of birth, old age, sickness, and death. In future lives, they will be endowed with noble features and eventually realize Anuttara, Samyak, Sambodhi. Mutsu, when the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata attained enlightenment, he realized by virtue of his original vows that sentient beings endured various ailments such as emaciation, terrible disabilities, fever, dysentery, jaundice, etc. Some were the targets of black magic or various poisons, while others suffered short lives or untimely death. At that time, seeking to put an end to these miseries and fulfill the desires of sentient beings, he entered a samadhi called eliminating all the suffering and afflictions of sentient beings. Once he entered that samadhi, a brilliant light shone forth from his urna and he uttered a great dharani. Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaja 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 Samudgate Svaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Svaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Swaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaja 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 Samudgate Swaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Swaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Swaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Swaha Namo Bhagavate Baisaja Guru Vaidurya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambudaya Tajata Om Baisaje Baisaje Baisaja Samudgate Swaha As he uttered this Durrani, he was bathed in light. The entire cosmos emitted a great radiance as it rumbled and shook. All sentient beings experienced great ease and joy as all their suffering and illnesses were removed. Mutsu, if you come across any men or women suffering illness, you should constantly cleanse them, bathe them, and rinse their mouths. You should single-mindedly recite this Durrani 108 times over their food, 
medicine, or water, from which insects have been removed. Once they have consumed the food or drink, their illness and suffering will disappear. If they have something they wish for, they should single-mindedly recite this Durrani, and their wish will be fulfilled. They will be free of disease, enjoy a longer life, and at death be born in the realm of the medicine master, where now beyond retrogression they will advance toward enlightenment. Therefore, Monsu, men and or, men or women who single-mindedly revere and respectfully make offerings to the medicine master of Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata should constantly recite this Durrani, never letting it out of their minds. Moreover, Monsu, upon hearing the various names and titles of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, Arhat, perfectly enlightened one, men and women of pure faith should recite and hold fast to this name. Each morning at dawn, having bathed themselves and cleaned their teeth, they should make offerings of fragrant flowers, incense, perfume, and various kinds of music before an image of this Buddha. Furthermore, they should copy the sutra or have others do so, as well as single-mindedly recite it and listen to explanations of its meaning. They should offer all the necessities of life to the Dharma, Dharma masters who teach this sutra, making sure they lack nothing. In this way, devout men and women will be under the protection of the Buddhas. All their wishes will be fulfilled, and they will eventually realize supreme enlightenment. Munsu Bosal then respectfully addressed the Buddha, O world honored one, I vow that in the Dharma semblance age, I will use every skillful means to help men and women of pure faith hear the name of the world honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata. Even in their sleep, I will awaken their consciousness with the name of this Buddha. O world honored one, if any devout persons should read, recite, and uphold this sutra or lecture upon it, explaining its meaning to others, or copy it, or have others copy it, or if they should pay it the utmost reverence, adorning it with fragrant flowers, perfumes, incense powder, and sticks, garlands, necklaces, banners, canopies, dance and music, and protecting it with precious five-colored cloth, and if they should prepare a clean site, erect a high altar, and place the sutra upon it, the four great celestial kings, their retinues, as well as countless hundreds of thousands of other divinities, will thereupon proceed to this place to make offerings and guard this sutra. World Honored One, wherever this treasure of a sutra has spread, and there are people capable of, of, of upholding it, you should know that, thanks to the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata's original vows, his virtues, and the power of his name, the place will be free of untimely death. In that place, there will no longer be evil demons or spirits to sap the vital energy of the people. Even if there were, these devout men and women would recover, enjoying good health and peace of mind. The Buddha then spoke to Munsu. So be it, so be it, Munsu. It is just as you say, as men and women of pure faith wish to make offerings to the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, they should first make an image of this Buddha and then place it upon a pure, clean altar. They should scatter all kinds of flowers, burn all varieties of incense, and adorn the place with banners and pennants. For seven days and nights, they should adhere to the eight precepts, consume only pure food, bathe and perfume themselves, put on clean, fresh clothing, and keep their minds undefiled, free of anger or malice. Moreover, they should develop feelings of kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity toward all sentient beings while bringing them benefits, peace, and happiness. They should play music and sing the praises of the Buddha while circumambulating this, his image in a rightward direction. They should bear in mind the Tathagata's merits, virtues, and original vows while reading and reciting this sutra, reflecting on its meaning and explaining it to others. Whatever they wish will then be fulfilled whether it be longevity, wealth, or anything else, such as official position or birth of sons and daughters. Moreover, if any sentient beings suddenly suffer nightmares and witness all kinds of evil omens, such as flocks of strange birds or hundreds of ominous signs throughout their homes, they need only venerate the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, 
with all kinds of wonderful offerings. And the nightmares, evil omens, and inauspicious signs will all disappear, no longer able to cause them harm. If any sentient beings are in fear of water, fire, knives, poison, falling off a precipice, or of vicious beasts, beasts such as wild elephants, lions, tigers, wolves, bears, venomous snakes, scorpions, centipedes, millipedes, mosquitoes, or biting flies, they need only single-mindedly recall and recite the name of the Buddha while respectfully making offerings to him, and they will escape all these terrors. If a country should be subjected, should be subject to foreign invasion, banditry, or rebellion, the inhabitants need only recall and recite the name of the Tathagata while paying homage to him, and all these calamities will likewise disappear. Moreover, Monsu, there are men and women of pure faith who throughout their lives have not worshipped any deities, but have single-mindedly taken refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and upheld the precepts, the five or ten lay precepts, the 400 bodhisattva precepts, or the 250 bhikshu or 500 bhikshuni precepts. However, if any of them have violated the precepts they have taken and fear following, falling into the lower realms, they should concentrate on reciting the name of the Buddha and respectfully make offerings to him. They will then certainly avoid rebirth in the three lower realms. If women who experience extreme pain during childbirth can, with utmost sincerity, recite the Tathagata's name, praise, venerate, and make offerings to him, they will be relieved of all their suffering. The children the children born to them will be without defects, attractive in appearance, causing those who see them to rejoice. They will be endowed with keen senses and intelligence, along with a quiet disposition. They will seldom become ill, nor will evil spirits sap their vital energy. The world honored one then asked Ananda, I have just extolled the, the merits and virtues of the world honored medicine master, Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata. These merits and virtues are shared by all Buddhas and are not difficult to comprehend. Do you have faith in them or not? Ananda respectfully replied, O oh, great virtuous world honored one, I do not have any doubts about the sutras preached by, by all the Tathagatas. Why? It is because the Tathagatas karma of body, speech, and mind are all pure. O oh, world honored one, the sun and moon may, may fall. Mount Sumeru, the majestic king of mountains, may tremble, but the words of the Buddhas can never change. O oh, world honored one, some sentient beings whose roots of faith are deficient may hear of the merits and virtues of the Buddhas and think, how can we obtain such great advantages just by reciting the name of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata alone? Because of this lack of faith, they even develop disparaging thoughts thus forfeiting great benefits and remaining in the long dark night of ignorance. Again and again, they will descend to the lower realms. The Buddha then said to Ananda, if these sentient beings should hear the name of the world honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata, single-mindedly recite and hold fast to it without harboring doubts, then it will be impossible for them to sink down to the lower realms. O Ananda, these extremely profound practices of the Buddhas are difficult to believe in, difficult to understand, yet you are now able to accept them. You should realize that this is all due to the awesome power of the Tathagatas. O Ananda, even the Shravakas, Prateka Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas who have not reached the tenth ground cannot understand and believe in this truth. Only the Bodhisattvas who are one lifetime away from Buddhahood can understand and believe it. O Ananda, a human rebirth is difficult to achieve, to believe in, respect and to believe in, respect and honor the triple jewel is even more difficult. To hear the name of the world honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata is more difficult still. O Ananda, the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata has cultivated countless bodhisattva practices, enjoyed countless skillful means, and made countless far reaching vows. If I were to take a kalpa or more to recount them, this would still not be enough time to 
to exhaustively describe all these wonderful practices, vows, and skillful means. At that time, a great bodhisattva in the assembly named Gutal Bosal arose from his seat, adjusted his robe to bear his right shoulder, knelt on his right knee, bowed, and with palms joined, respectfully addressed the Buddha. O great, virtuous, world-honored one, in the Dharma semblance age, there will be sentient beings who suffer numerous calamities, who are always sick and emaciated, unable to eat or drink, their throats dry and lips parched, their eyes seeing darkness everywhere. As the signs of death appear, they are surrounded by parents, family, friends, and acquaintances, weeping and lamenting. As such pa patients lie in bed, Yama sends his messengers, whose job is to lead the consciousness of the dying person to appear before the king of justice. Now, all sentient beings have inborn spirits who record everything they do, both their transgressions and their merits. These spirits then present the patient's entire record to Yama, king of justice. At that time, Yama questions the dying person and tabulates their good and bad karma before deciding upon their fate. If at that point, the relatives and acquaintances of the patient are able to take refuge in the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata on behalf of the patient, invite monks and nuns to recite, to recite this sutra, light seven-tiered lamps, and hang five-colored longevity banners, the patient's consciousness may return then and there, and, this, and the patient will remember everything that has happened, as if it had been a dream, or else, after seven, twenty-one, thirty-five, or forty-nine days, the patient may then regain consciousness and, as if awakening from a dream, will recall, <clears throat> will recall everything that was witnessed about the consequences of good and bad karma. Having personally witnessed the consequences of karma, such persons will never again create evil karma, even if their lives are in danger. Therefore, men and women of pure faith should uphold the name of the medicine master, Lapis Lazuli, Radiance Tathagata, venerate and make offerings to him according to their means. Ananda then asked Gutal Bosal, good man, how should we venerate and make offerings to the world honored medicine master, Lapis Lazuli, Radiance Tathagata, and how should we make the longevity penance and lamps? Gutal Bosal replied, Virtuous one, in order to help the patient recover, you should adhere to the eight precepts for seven days and seven nights. Make offerings of food, drink, and other necessities to monks and nuns in accordance with your means. Pay homage and respectfully make offerings to the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata six times a day and recite this sutra 49 times. You should light 49 lamps, Make seven images of the Tathagata and place seven lamps, each as large as a cartwheel, before each image, letting them burn continuously for 49 days and nights. You should also make five colored banners, 49 hand lengths long. Furthermore, you should release 49 species of animals, thus sparing their lives. The patient may then escape danger and will not be under the sway of evil demons, nor subject to untimely death. Moreover, Ananda, when the anointed Kshatriya kings find themselves beset by calamities, such as epidemics, foreign invasion, internal insurrection, and adverse alignment of the stars, an eclipse of the sun or the moon, unseasonable storms, or a failure of the monsoons, they should develop compassionate feelings toward all sentient beings. They should also pardon prisoners and make offerings to the world-honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata in accordance with the rites described earlier. Thanks to these good roots and the power of the Tathagata's original vows, peace and stability will immediately return to the affected countries. The rains and winds will be favorable, crops will mature, will mature on time, and everyone will be healthy and happy. The country will be free of evil Yaksha demons out to harm the populace. All the evil omens will immediately disappear, and these anointed Kshatriya kings will enjoy greater longevity and vitality and finer appearance as well as greater health and freedom 
than ever before. Oh, Ananda, the, the queens, consorts, princesses, royal heirs, great ministers, court ladies, officials or commoners who suffer disease and other misfortunes should also make offerings to the medicine Buddha. They should make five colored longevity banners, light lamps, ensuring that they burn continuously, liberating all, liberate all kinds of animals, scatter flowers of various colors, and burn various kinds of incense renowned for their fragrance. Then they will then recover from disease and escape misfortune. Ananda then asked Gutal Bosal, good man, how can an, how can an expiring lifespan be lengthened. Gutal Bosal replied, Virtuous one, did you not hear the Tathagata explain the nine forms of untimely death? I would urge everyone to make longevity banners and lamps and cultivate merits and virtues. Thanks to such cultivation, they will escape suffering and misfortune throughout their lives. Ananda further asked, What are the nine forms of untimely death? Gutal Bosal replied, Some sentient beings contract a minor illness, which goes untreated for lack of a physician or medicine, or else, even when there is access to physicians and medicines, the wrong medicine is prescribed, causing premature death, or the patients, believing the false pronouncements of earthly demons, evil teachers or practitioners of black magic may panic, unable to calm their minds. They may then engage in divination or perform animal sacrifices to propitiate the spirits praying for blessings and longevity all in vain. Through ignorance, confusion, and reliance on wrong inverted views, they meet with untimely death and sink into the hells. With no end in sight, this is the first form of untimely death. The second form is execution by ro royal decree. The third is losing, losing one's vitality to the demons through hunting, gambling, debauchery, drunkenness, or extreme dissipation. The fourth is death by fire. <clears throat> the fifth is death by drowning. The sixth is being devoured by wild animals. The seventh is falling off a mountain or a cliff. The eighth is death by poison, incantations, evil mantras, or demons raised from the dead. The ninth is from hunger or thirst, or lack of food and water. These are the nine forms of untimely death mentioned by the Tathagatas. There are, all, there are also countless other forms which are too numerous to describe. Moreover, Ananda, Yama is responsible for keeping the karmic register of everyone in the world. If sentient beings have been unfilial, committed the five heinous crimes, disparaged the triple jewel, broken the laws of the land, or violated the major precepts, Yama evaluates the severity of their wrong deeds and, deci and decides on their fate. Therefore, I urge sentient beings to light lamps, make banners, liberate animals, and cultivate merits in order to avoid suffering and misfortune. At that time, there were 12 powerful Yakcha Dejangs in the great assembly named Gungbi La Dejang, Bol Jo La Dejang, Mi Gi La Dejang, An Jo La Dejang, Al Ni La Dejang, San Jo La Dejang, In Dal La Dejang, Pa I La Dejang, Ma Ho La Dejang, Jin Dal La Dejang, Cho Du La Dejang, and Bi Gal La Dejang. Each was accompanied by a retinue of 7,000 Yakchas. They all raised their voices in unison and said respectfully to the Buddha, O oh, world honored one, today, thanks to the Buddha's awesome power, we have succeeded in hearing the name of the medicine master, Lapis Lazuli, Radiance Tathagata, and no longer fear descending to the lower realms. Together with one mind, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha for the rest of our lives and pledge to support all sentient beings, bringing them genuine benefits and joy. Wherever this sutra circulates, or wherever there are sentient beings who hold fast to the name of the medicine master, Lapis Lazuli, Radiance Tathagata, and respectfully make offerings to him, whether in villages, towns, kingdoms, or in the wilderness, we will all protect them. We will release them from all suffering 
and calamities and see to it that all their wishes are fulfilled. Sentient beings afflicted by disease or calamity and wishing to escape should also recite, should also read or recite this sutra using a five colored cord. They should tie a knot for each of our names, untying them when their wishes are fulfilled. Thereupon, Buddha Shakyamuni praised the great Yakta Dejangs with these words, good indeed, good indeed, great Yakta Dejangs. Those of you who wish to repay the benevolence and the virtues of the world honored medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata should always benefit and bring joy to all sentient beings in this way. Ananda then asked the Buddha, world honored one, what should we call this teaching and how should we adhere to it and put it into practice? Buddha Shakyamuni replied to Ananda, this teaching is called the original vows, merits and virtues of the medicine master Lapis Lazuli Radiance Tathagata or the Durrani of the vows of the 12 Yakta Dejangs to benefit sentient beings or removing all karmic obstacles. You should uphold it as such. When the Bhagavan finished speaking, the great Bodhisattvas, as well as the great Shravakas, kings, ministers, Brahmins, laypersons, gods, dragons, yakchas, gandolbas, asuras, garudas, kinaras, mahoragas, and other human and non-human beings all rejoiced at the Buddha's words. They faithfully accepted them and put them into practice. The end of the Sutra of the Medicine Master, Lapis Lazuli, Radiance Tathagata. The mantra for repairing mistakes. Ogol jinon om horo horo sayamoke sabaha om horo horo sayamoke sabaha om horo horo sayamoke sabaha. The mantra of universal dedication. Boho yang jinon om samara samara mimara jaruma jagorabaraham om samara samara mimara jaruma jagorabaraham om samara samara mimara jaruma jagorabaraham